Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. This is Tom and Jesse Talk Movies. I am Jesse. And I'm Tom. Uh, before we begin, as always, the preamble, if you have anything that you would like to suggest or say, uh, please feel free to contact us at programs at cshlibrary.org. I'm excited today. We have a really good show. Yes. yes. Uh, we're going to be watching a film that you really like quite a bit, mm -hmm. Dark Water. Uh, we we're, were talking about Jenny and Jennifer Conley this month. Yes. A couple different films of hers. So uh, Dark Water. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So, you know, we decided uh, what do we want to do for uh, April? And, uh, I was, you know, I get really excited about actresses. So I was like, why don't we pick one of my favorite, Jennifer Connelly? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people know her from A Beautiful Mind. Um, you know, uh, Labyrinth when she was younger. Incredible. And, no, just uh, Hulk. Hulk. Just Hulk. Hulk. Okay. Just Hulk which, All right. It, so it wasn't that incredible. Which, yes. she, which she's lovely. Okay. Uh, the movie's not, but she's perfect as always. And uh, I just, I really want to bring attention to her work because I, I really do think she is one of the best actresses working, alive and working today. Um, you know, has been at the Academy Awards and so forth. And, uh, you know, we always like to talk about some of the lesser known films um, like we did, you know, last month with uh, Mark Scorsese. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, OK, so what are some of Jennifer Connelly's uh, lesser known films or whatever? So I naturally picked one of my my top 10 favorite films of all time. That's big. It is big. That is a big one for me. Uh, it's called Dark Water from 2005. Um, I saw this in theater, so I was just 16 when this came out. I actually saw it with my mom in the theater, cool. so that was fun. Um, and uh, this is a movie that, like, because it's one of my favorites, it's really not well known. I like to recommend it to people because it's a deep psychological thriller. You get a little bit of horror thrown in there. Um, just a film that really went under the radar. It was totally advertised as something it's really not and uh it's a shame it was just it came out in the summertime and it just not many people saw it and it's sadly forgotten and i i always like to throw this movie out there with, uh, for recommendations so this film is actually a remake of a uh, japanese you know horror, horror film um same premise uh but pretty different i would say not drastically but there you know there are different things going on um, I had seen the, this remake before I saw the Japanese film. Um, I do really enjoy the Japanese film. I think it's worth a watch, um, but obviously I like this one a little better, which is quite uh, rare. Um, so we know I love it. I mean, I, I'll just throw it quickly and then I definitely want to hear sure. you talk about it because um, always when I, there's always a bit of anxiety when you mention uh, when you recommend one of your favorite films to somebody, especially somebody who is a movie buff. And it's always like, it's like recommending a restaurant. Like, I really <laughs> hope they like it. <laughs> Other than, otherwise, it's going to make me look bad. But um, so thanks for watching it, of course. Anytime. Uh, I always appreciate your recommendations. The film, uh, you know, I'm just going to read it off from IMDb. It is about a mother and daughter. They're going through a bitter custody battle. And they moved to Roosevelt Island, New York, in this dark, dreary, dilapidated apartment building. And uh, they are targeted by the ghost of a former resident. Um, you know, don't think poltergeist like that. A little different here. We'll get into that without mm -hmm. spoiling things. Mm -hmm. uh, the film is directed by, and I'm pro I, I cannot pronounce certain last names, um, Walter Salles. Sales, uh, he's a Spanish director. He did the Motorcycle Diaries, which is a pretty popular uh, film. The film obviously stars Jennifer Connelly, John C. Riley, Tim Roth, um, and uh, uh, Duggery Scott, which uh, that's always fun. Good for him. Um, good for him. Good. Um, so, Jess, what you what do you think about this movie? Okay, so um, I, it's very important to you. It's a very important film to you. And please don't hold back. <laughs> I. It's funny. This is going to be kind of a nuanced answer here. Okay. Um, I was, I thought it was so-so. Mm -hmm. The standout for me was Jennifer, Jennifer Conley. Um, I think she, in her role, is kind of a grieving mother. Obviously, she's had a, um, a history of traumatic events, which they kind of go into detail explaining. Um, kind of a rough upbringing, I guess, I guess you could say, Jennifer Conley's mm -hmm. character had. Um, and of course, she has a young daughter. 
And the daughter, the, uh, the actress that plays the daughter, I think it's, she's a great actress. Um, yes. I really enjoy the relationship between Jennifer Connelly and the character of her daughter. Yeah. Um, my biggest issue with this film is the pacing, I'll say. Okay. Um, and it's funny because you and I had kind of, we had discussed this after I saw the movie for the first time and my immediate conversation with you, I, I kind of thought about it one way and then you changed my perspective a little bit. Um, so the pacing is a bit slow, I felt. Um, it's kind of like a, a, a meld of different genres. Again, it's, it's a very interesting character study in terms of Jennifer Connelly, her experiencing these traumatic events, reliving them. Meanwhile, she moves into this very ramshackle, dilapidated apartment, as mm -hmm. you said, in Roosevelt Island. And there's these paranormal events that kind of start taking place. Um, she's on the, let's see, what floor is she? I think she's on like the eighth or the eighth floor. floor and then like she's that. got this, this, well, I guess things start off with, she sees this, um, this puddle, right? Mm -hmm. this, this puddle starts to form in one of the corners. The roof above her is leaking. The ceiling above her is leaking. And she kind of confronts her landlord about it to say, you know, like just I just moved into this apartment, and and of course the landlord goes, well, no one's lived here for quite some time. So that's kind of a very gripping premise, um, and the setup, I guess, ends up being far different from what you would expect it to be. It's, yes, it's there are elements of horror, um, not so many jump scares. Um, and maybe it, one or two. Maybe one or two. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what's funny is that this, so was this the author of The Ring? Yes. Yeah, so this is uh, based on a book and from the same writer who wrote the book for The Ring, okay. uh, which was obviously later adapted into one of the most successful American horror Asian remakes, period. Yeah. Made hundreds of millions of dollars. Naomi Watts was in it. Uh, Yes, so it was totally marketed as, oh, The Ring. Because, you know, in the early 2000s, there was this boom of horror remakes in general. But we saw a lot of remakes coming from other countries, especially in Asia. And it was really uh, The Ring that started that. And then they followed up with The Grudge uh, with Sarah Michelle Gellar. Again, hundreds of millions of dollars. Like, these movies made so much. And then... So this is what's going on in, in uh, cinema in the early 2000s. So they're like, okay, let's remake Dark Water. Then they do this one, The Eye, which has to Alba. Then they do one with Kiefer Sutherland. And, and you know, they're, just, they're popping up everywhere. And, and they're pretty successful for the most part. Not all of them. They're not all great, but um, that was really like, I mean, that was like high school era for me. So right. that was really like, it's very nostalgic, of course. But um, yeah, this is what was going on. And uh, because you look at how much money the ring and the grudge made right. it would be you know why not and now i think it's and, and thank you for that because i think it's kind of important to contextualize exactly where this movie kind of falls in as mm -hmm. though almost the marketing campaign it was a push to try and replicate like the look and the feel of say like a grudge but the, that's, the, yeah. that's a dreary kind of thing right. it's a new kind of filmmaking that i'll get into sure but, but now so so tonally while yeah. it is very dark and kind of gritty in nature. And I think that the film is shot very well. Yeah. Um, the substance of the film is far different from like, say the grudge or something like that. And it's not trying to be something like that. No. But I, I think, and it's kind of unfair because it's almost a demerit against the movie, but like the marketing campaign, and this is, this is what kind of caused me to change my opinion a little bit. The movie is marketed almost as like this unremitting, tense, nonstop horror movie. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's not that. Right. Um, and I think that the scares, no pun intended here, they're, it's a lot more of an insidious buildup. Um, and, and the movie thrives in having you be maybe unsettled and be tense, but it's yes. not it's not a horror film per se. I didn't feel that way. Right. Um, I felt that it's really more about a grieving mother who's kind of experiencing these paranormal events. And then there's like a blur between what is reality and what is what's going on in her head. Yeah, it's a very interesting character study, and and it's just unfortunate that it was marketed as a way to this. Is, we're going to cash in on on the eye. We're going to cash yeah. in on the grudge because it's not that. And it's you do not. have like you do have a little girl, mm -hmm. um, and you do have kind of a relationship between mother and daughter. But it's just it's not. 
It's not the grudge. It's not the rage. Yeah. And, and it's, sh- unfortunately, to put it in that light is not fair because it almost paints this movie in a, in a different light that it's not. It's um, a really mature film, even though it has a PG-13 rating. It's right. not tonally like these other films. So that's why I think it really stands out from the, all the other ones. Um, you know, this was definitely um, a different style of filming. I always love to see foreign films uh, just to see how their how th- how their styles uh, different from you know American films, and it's it's so interesting. You know, you can watch um, documentaries, behind the scenes stuff. Uh, you know, when they are filming like stuff like The Grudge, and it's like very different. It's very much it's less like Hollywood, like money, 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 and it's more about like no, this is a job, and it's professional in the sense that it's like you know when they're filming in, in Japan on the streets, you know, you don't have people running up to the celebrities. You, the, the people who live in Japan are just like, okay, they're filming something, let's walk over here. And, you know, there's a kind of a respect there. Whereas like, you know, Hollywood movies, it'll be, oh my God, Matt Damon is over there. And it's like, okay, you know, that's not really what this is about. So, um, and just the way that, especially horror films, uh, they do them so different in, in Japan and it totally, goes into like Asian folklore, there is, a, like here in America, we have um, like a boogeyman, I guess, or like, um, you know, what do we know for like, yeah, uh, how many renditions of um, of the, there's a uh, Freddy Krueger or like Michael Myers, we're known for like, yeah, like the slasher kind of genre. And well, like, there's a time and place for that. And I appreciate that. That's, it's not really filmmaking, right. like, you know. It's not highbrow cinema. No, and I mean, I love it. Don't right. get me wrong. Yeah. But um they're they're focused more on psychological horror and tension so i would compare this to a hitchcock film so i think if you like something like psycho um not really the birds but like maybe frenzy or like vertigo it's more about psychological tension and really getting under your skin and being like wow this is kind of like freaky because i mean something like okay it's a ghost of a little girl that can totally play cheesy and this film is the opposite of cheesy and it's totally viable and totally realistic um, and that's what I like about it. And it is totally a dark, depressing, dreary atmosphere, you know, where it's pouring every day. What, you know, a lot of blues and dark grays and tans are used in the film. And I love the location of it being on Roosevelt Island. I didn't really know. I never heard of Roosevelt Island until I was 16 and saw this movie. And it's this little like two mile long island. Um, if that, um, you know, in, you know, in like the Manhattan area, you can look it up in a map uh, on a map. You really have to like zoom in. It's this long, narrow strip. And you're like, oh, OK, actually, about maybe about four years ago, I went there because the movie was shot there. Um, and uh, it's totally like cool. Like you're on Roosevelt Island. You can see Manhattan. It's right across the water. Like it's right there. And you take a tram to get there. And I just, that was so fascinating to me. And we're walking like, oh my God, that's the exterior of the building in the apartment building. And that was really cool. And also fun fact, um, the opening scene in this movie was shot at Syosset High School, I believe, or Syosset Middle School, which is very which is close, 10 minutes very away close, from here. Um, on my way, you know, sometimes to work, I'm like, we take a little detour. I'm like, oh my God, there it is. That's, it. that's really cool. Um, so yeah, but, uh, you know, Jennifer Connelly being in this, uh, I think she's such a versatile actress. She's um, terrific, and I, I, I thought she was just terrific. Yeah, I mean, seeing her like in um, uh, a, an American mind, a beautiful mind, mind. <laughs> uh, American. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, she's just great. And then I've seen it, and now she's kind of doing like the indie stuff, and she'll be in a few films every couple of years. But um, you know, in, like the '90s, like early 2000s, it was like she was in like three, right. And I just thought it was really cool to put that actress in this film. Um, she did this one film called, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It was an indie film with Ben Kingsley uh, called House of Sand and Bond. I have heard uh, of it. Yeah, it's actually a, a 2003, right okay. after Hulk. And it's based on a really popular book. And again, it, she's known for playing like down on your luck, troubled characters and I think she nails that. And what really separates this film from a lot of other films like it, I think is the fact that it's like 50% a ghost story, a classy one, and 50% a character psychological study because she is dealing with this 
awful custody battle. Her husband's really nasty to her. And she's got this, you know, great little girl um, who's dealing with stuff. And it's just she herself deals with such like PTSD and migraines from the stuff she's grown up right. with. So there's a lot of layers to the film. As far as its pacing, I totally get where you're coming from. It is a slower paced film. I didn't mind that because I was enjoying spending time with the characters. But this is a movie where someone said, yeah, I was really into it. I get it. It's fine. I, you know what it is? It's, and again, it's, I was very interested in the world. I was very interested in, in the world building. Mm -hmm. um, again, it, it all goes back to Jennifer Conley. And mm -hmm. I think she's just a very interesting character mm -hmm. and a very flawed character. Um, their, the relationship between her and her ex-husband, Doug Ree Scott, I mean, it gets increasingly hostile. Yeah. Um, and that's where all the drama comes in. You know what it was? And I'm thinking about it now. You had, you had me watch the trailer first before I watched the movie. And the trailer just so belies like what this movie's about. And, and it's like the fault of the marketing. I mean, that's what totally. I'm saying. Because it's like they paint it out to be this jump scare. And it's not. And it's not. There are scenes in the trailer and even some of the commercials on TV at the time that are not in the movie. And it's like, I wonder, were they shot just for some advertisement purposes? Right. Like, like to get people into the theaters? Yeah. And it's not fair to the movie. because It is a hard movie to market. Because it's not going to be for everybody. Right. Because I, it's, it's almost one of those genre blenders. Where it's it's all, not, I would almost want to say it's kind of an art house film mm -hmm. in a little bit. Like, I could see, like, the hereditary, like, the crowd yes. who, who's a fan of hereditary yes. could go see that. Or if you like classier, like, Hitchcock films, yes. I would say it totally blends in with that. It's stuff. definitely more of a psychological, introspective sort of horror film. I mean, with a you don't have to be into horror films to, you know, watch something like you don't. Yeah. You don't. So um, I actually I did watch this with my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly enough, mm -hmm. and my mom happened to really like it. Cool. Um, and again, I, I think it's more about the especially the relationship between Jennifer Connelly and her daughter was great. And, yes. and the acting is great. I would say see it for that alone. Do not watch the trailer if you haven't seen mm -hmm. the trailer. I would say because it's going to paint a very different picture. It paints it as oh my god, this is going to be really scary. And it's like no, it's not. I mean, the movie. I if I had to like if I owned a video store, I would display it in the horror section, mm -hmm. but it's it's kind of it mixes genre it's it's like dark drama had a category like dark thriller drama i mean i don't i don't really know but um there were a couple other things if, if i don't want to guess off, please it's fresh in my head like you said the roosevelt island setting it's yeah. just it's terrific i love when setting plays a character in film. absolutely the the sort of um unremitting dinginess i mean it's just nothing but gray skies right. rain i thought that, that was well done um, yeah just to sort of it's uh, really atmospheric and very atmospheric. And, and that's what i like about this because the atmosphere surrounding the film mimics what's going on in her characters moment. right and you talk about someone who's a very sort of uh, malleable actor or actress mm -hmm. john c Riley. i thought was great i thought he role. was great in this he kind of plays the I, sketchy I mean, landlord he's a sketchy yeah. landlord but you know what i mean uh, you know John C. Riley from like Wedding Crashers and uh, Talladega. No, no, no. Uh, um, Step Brothers. Step Brothers. I'm sorry. Doing goofy comedy. Talladega looks like Nights. a clown, but he's excellent in this. He's really good in dramatic roles. My other gripe would be, um, so you had Doug Ray Scott, who's the ex-husband. He was fine. I thought he played his part. And you had Tim Roth. For some reason, they they wanted to Americanize these characters, like they wanted to make them New Yorkers. So <laughs> they kind of gave them. Um, New York accents, and I, I didn't think Tim Roth was particular. I didn't think he did a. He's British. Right? He's British. He didn't do a great job, I think, with the accent. Um, Doug Ree Scott, I think, might be Scottish. Something like that, but I. Yeah. No, I see. Like there. I mean, I, I would. I felt like you wouldn't have lost anything if you just had them keep yeah, their authentic fine. accents. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was actually kind of like took me out in a few spots. Um, that was my, my biggest concern. It was an enjoyable watch, and it was something that I'm actually glad I watched. Yeah. My biggest gripe is the marketing. Why did you market this as a horror movie? I know, yes, yeah. to get people money in seats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if it was just as a dark drama, I would have been like, oh, I'm totally sold on it. I feel like this is a movie that could have come out in the last two or three years, and it probably would have done way better. Mm -hmm. um, I would have kept everything the same. But... And what, what's great about this is that there's so many, I mean, again, not abundance of scares, we'll say, but so many little practical effects. It's the, it's this pernicious puddle that you see keeps getting larger and larger. I mean, it's all yes. stuff like it just look. It's a good looking movie. 
I saw it on Blu-ray, which mm -hmm. is a very rare Blu-ray. I yes. mean, you and I are fans of, of collecting, uh, collecting. <laughs> Um, but it's, it holds up visually. It holds up. It's interesting. I'm such a fan of the filmmaking aspect of this film. Like I love the use of sound in it. Um, you know, early on in the film, there is uh, I forget what year it takes. I don't know. It's Seventies, the eighties, whatever. Right. Um, you have like maybe eight or nine year old Jennifer Connelly. And she's playing with like this. It's like a metal circular thin thing on top of a, a pencil. And it has like strings with beads. And when you go like that, it's like a noisemaker right. kind of thing. And they play with that throughout the whole film. And I love that. Sound I think that is big. so awesome. Because yeah. when you have a film where our main character is having a psychological breakdown and you play with sounds, like when she, she has migraines in the film and there's this high pitched uh, like whine when like she'll squint her eyes like, ow, you know, like my head hurts and she goes to take her pills and you, you hear that and you're like, oh my God, that is such smart filmmaking Absolutely. because we're playing with all the senses now. So you, it really helps you get into the character's shoes. And what I really liked, you know, it's called Dark Water because it's about there are disgusting Coca-Cola like stains in her apartment that are just appearing and you find out why later on. But um, I love how throughout the film that progressively gets dirtier and dirtier in her apartment and there's one scene in particular where i remember seeing in the theater and my mom said out loud i feel so bad for her right now and it's this scene where it's like her daughter had an incident at school she goes to the uh you know she was released from the hospital i can't find her no one's answering she goes back to her apartment and just collapses on the floor and starts screaming and crying and the water is just it stains it's dark and i'm just like this this is filmmaking. <laughs> no, it, but it really was. I think that the way that they, the way that everything escalated in such a way, and you mentioned not only the, the um, moral cues, the, the sounds, mm -hmm. but like you said, the, the dinginess, I mean, the incessant rain, the, the puddles growing larger. I mean, yeah. it just- it, The film would not work if it was sunny and beautiful every day. Right, it just exacerbated all of the tension that Jennifer Connelly was experiencing to the point like, where everything comes to a head. It's a thought. There trip. is, there. that's where I think the biggest horror is, or at least the biggest discomfort is the viewer. It's like, you want to kind of reach into the screen and help Jennifer Connelly. Yeah. And it's like, from every different angle, she's having problems with her daughter. She's having problems with her ex-husband. The apartment's a mess. And it's just, everything is falling apart in her world. Yes. And that's where it really climaxes with things just being so uncomfortable. And I think that's what the filmmaker does a terrific job. And I think the film also does a good job of like, what's really going on here? Like dark mystery, I guess that's how I would classify it, where it's like, is she going crazy or is something happening? I would also also compare it maybe a little bit to like Polanski, like repulsion. And, you know, there's a sense of paranoia in the film. Who can I trust? And she can't even trust herself. And I just, I love it. So can't, it was, can't say enough about it. It was, it was a well-made film. Again, like I said, the one gripe would be like, Come on, market it fairly. Like, yeah. like give it the give it the respect that it deserves, you know? Yeah. So. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, I think that you know that wraps it up yeah. for the talk about Dark Water. Our cool. next uh show we are going to discuss another Jennifer Connolly film called The Rocketeer, a film I've actually never seen. I think it's early 90s offhand. I think it's uh, yeah, very early 90s. I yeah. saw this as so a she's probably like 21. Okay. okay. I saw this as a kid. I remember mm -hmm. loving it, but I now I can't. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's like out of my mind I just remember loving it so I'm excited to kind of yes um, so I'm looking forward to that it seems to be very uh, you know aesthetically pleasing yes. and cool sets and stuff like that so I'm always down for that so yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for thank watching, you for watching. Uh, again any questions concerns please feel free to contact us at programs at cshlibrary.org as always we really appreciate you watching your viewership and we'll uh, see you in a couple of weeks thanks thank you take care